Hey Mojoholics, welcome back to What's Your Mojo, the weekly show where we fill you in on what you might have missed last week, give you a sneak peek on what's coming up next week, ask your feedback, and answer viewer FAQs. Allons-y. In case you missed it, we had a lot of great stuff for you this week, including... Top 10 best third installments of movie franchises and top 10 worst third installments of movie franchises. We also published top 10 famous douchebags. These are those celebrities that are considered by many people to be mean-spirited, full of themselves, or just generally jerks. Now, as we've said a million times, we're not saying we think that, but people do. Anyway, if you want to rage at some douchey douchebags, do it. And finally, onto a not-so-douchey celeb-centric video, Top 10 Celebrity Performances in Video Games. Nothing beats hearing your fave celebrity's voice coming at you from your console, so see where your picks stack up. If you guys are having as much trouble trying to find new ways to waste your time as I am trying to find new ways to tell you to waste your time, then have I got the solution for you, and I bet you can guess what it is. A weekend mojothon. So, what's on the docket for this week? Ready to get nostalgic for those awkward school dances? Well, have we got the series for you. Today we begin our series on the top 10 slow dance songs per decade, starting with the 1970s. I swear to God, half my iPod is on these lists, so I am psyched for the slow jams. But anyway, tomorrow we are bringing you top 10 forgotten first person shooters. So if your favorite video game is constantly being overlooked, or if you want to find a new game to play, that one's for you. We've also got a mini-series this weekend about band commercials. On Saturday, we've got top 10 band sexy commercials, and on Sunday, we've got top 10 funny band commercials. So if you want to see some scantily clad women or some really annoying kids, you should watch those. Are you guys ready for some trivia? Let's do it. What rock song plays an important role in the rebooted Battlestar Galactica universe? All Along the Watchtower, Stairway to Heaven, Highway to Hell, or Living on a Prayer. You are correct if you said All Along the Watchtower, which is played at important moments during the series. And you can see that on top 10 overused songs in movies and TV. If you want to test your knowledge on that or anything else, head over to watchmojo.com slash trivia. Anyway, I'm talking to you about Battlestar Galactica because October 18th, 2004 is the day that the first episode of the rebooted series aired. So if you want to relive the frackin' good times with some frackin' good videos, check these ones out. Top 10 sci-fi television series, top 10 alien races from television, top 10 sexy female aliens, top 10 sci-fi babes, top 10 cyborgs in TV and film, top 10 good guys gone bad in TV, top 10 disappointing TV finales, and many, many more. Also, don't forget to head over to watchmojo.com slash calendar to see thousands of our older, equally timely videos. And while you're there, make sure to vote on the topics that matter most to you so we can tailor our future videos to your tastes. Before we ask you guys your opinions on a few of our lists, we thought we'd let you see where your hard work gets you. Top 10 Serious End Credit Scenes comes out Sunday, October 19th. Top 10 Annoying Things in Video Games comes out Thursday, October 23rd, as does Top 10 Slayer Songs. Thanks again for your help in choosing those lists. But we have even more lists in need of your input this week. To start, Katy Perry is doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl next year. So we were thinking maybe we should do top 10 Katy Perry songs. And then we were thinking maybe we could expand that to do top 10 Britney Spears songs, etc. Would you be interested in that? Let us know in the comments and by voting. Next up, top 10 PC LAN party games. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know what that is. But if you do, you probably have strong opinions on the topic, so please vote because I am of no help at all. You love explosions, I love explosions, we have tons of videos about explosions, but guess what? We have not exhausted all possibilities yet. We've got top 10 movie helicopter explosions for you. I think my personal faves are Die Hard 4 or Mission Impossible, but hey, I'm wrong sometimes. Well, not really, but let us know what you think anyway. And finally, we've got top 10 forbidden baby names. Not hearing about a lot of Adolphs or Osamas these days, are ya? I wonder why. Anyway, point is, vote for which baby name you think is the most verboten. And as always, be sure to head over to watchmojo.com slash suggest to let us know what you think. And while you're there, make sure to exercise your right to vote on any other lists you might have an opinion on. 
Hey Mojoholics, it's time for us to don our fancy t-shirts, to sit on this red couch, and to give you answers and free stuff, right Dan? Right. Speaking of free stuff, last week we held a giveaway to give away uh, two Roku products. Well, whoever told us the most creative story about a time that they were home alone late at night watching a scary movie and got freaked out won. Well, two stories in particular impressed us. Congratulations to James Owens who had this story to tell us which won him a Roku streaming stick. I'm not proud of this story, but I guess for a Roku player, I'll sell my soul. A friend and I watched The Conjuring when it first came out. It freaked the both of us out so much. Later that night, I got out of bed to go to the bathroom. Everyone else had gone to bed, so it was pitch black in the house. As I was walking, I kept hearing sounds, as you do sometimes when you're the only one around. I decided to turn around to check the view. I saw a large black shadow and I instantly screamed. It was so loud, my mom heard it and came to see what it was. Then I had to tell her that it was the shadow of a lamp. I love lamp. And the proud winner of a Roku 3 is the bodacious bum, whose story goes a little something like this. I'm something of a horror movie connoisseur. When I first watched Sleepaway Camp, it was about one in the morning and I was at my bedroom desk viewing it on my laptop all by my lonesome. I sat vegetable-like and hunched over, enjoying the goofy, low-budget fun of the film, but was not genuinely scared until that infamous ending. No spoilers here. Once the final 30 or 30 seconds or so was revealed, I sat completely still for about the next half hour, too afraid to move. It was one of the only times in my life that I can remember I was actually too afraid to move. Once I, gather, once I gathered up the courage to move so that I could turn the lights on, my flicking of the switch resulted in a loud click and the bulbs burning out. So naturally, I collapsed on the floor in, other, in, the, in utter terror. I ruined the story. It was a groovy night. So, speaking of Halloween, not sure that we were, but speaking of Halloween, <laughs> uh, are there any more ideas as to what me and Rebecca should dress up as? And second of all, we'd also like to throw another contest your way. Yeah, we've got some uh, t-shirts to give away. Sue, so, I'm actually really excited about this contest. It is a pumpkin carving contest, all right? So, what you can do is carve up the prettiest, coolest, or just most impressive jack-o'-lantern you can come up with, and post it to Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag WMPumpkin. Also, just to prove that it's you that actually carved the pumpkin, please write WMPumpkin on a handwritten note and take a picture of that with your pumpkin. So, we know it's you. You know, kind of like, when you have a hostage and you make them hold today's paper so you know the person's still alive. That's a thing. But wait, this show just became super worth your while because we have yet another giveaway to give away today. We are so full of it. Yes, we actually have five, count them, five Fury prize packs to give away. <laughs> each of which includes two mini posters, a t-shirt, a lovely messenger bag, and it's, this is all in honor of Fury, which comes out today, and stars Brad Pitt, Shia LaBeouf, Clint Eastwood's son, Draco Malfoy's dad, and uh, Shane from The Walking Dead. All right, all you gotta do to win one of the Fury prize packs is look at this picture of Dan's action figures and name them all. Bonus points for specificity. Anyway, if you do it, you may be able to win one of the five Fury prize packs, but I'm sorry to say you have to live in North America to be eligible, sorry. Alrighty, now that that's out of the way, let's get to some questions. George Zagogianis wants to know, Dear Dan and Rebecca, no, dear Rebecca and Dan, yep, another Halloween question. What is your favorite Hitchcock movie? I love Psycho, The Man Who Knew Too Much, The Birds, and Vertigo. Please answer this in your next show. P.S. You both rocked the dance floor. So, my answer sucks, but I think the only one I've actually seen is Psycho, though I do like it. However, I have seen all of the Psychos though they are not all Hitchcock movies. But there is a series of sequels, all of which are terrible. You may go now. Very good. Um, <laughs> I'm a fan of Psycho. I really like uh, 39 Steps. I, uh, that's a lesser known one that I think is pretty damn good. Kicking it old school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did that on Sesame Street and I loved it. 39 Steps? <laughs> yeah. Cool. I have one here from Night Mist. Hey, Dan and Rebecca. Out of all the animated Disney movies that you've seen, which animated Disney movie was your favorite per decade? I respectfully request your opinion in the next What's Your Mojo episode. Thank you and have a great weekend. Blah. By decade, I, I uh, honestly don't know wh what came out in what decade. Um, I'm a big fan of The Sword in the Stone. I think that was like the 70s or maybe the late 60s. Yeah. I think it was the 60s? Yeah, that's, that's my personal, one of my personal favorites. Um, 
it's sort of a lesser known Disney movie then. So I like Fantasia, I've mentioned this before, so that's, that's in the 40s, I think. 50s, I don't know, is Dumbo the 50s? I don't know. Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland I love, so let's go with that. The 60s, Robin Hood, was that one? I think that was the 70s. Really? This okay. decade thing is really throwing us off. I know, we should have Googled this, but I'm doing this off the top of my head, it's good. Uh, well, let's say 80s, Little Mermaid, 90s, Aladdin. Yeah, I'm an Aladdin over the Lion King. Yeah. And 2000... Are you... I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Sword in the stone. All of them. All of the, all of the things. Okay, awesome. Let's read some comments of the week. Henry Hamilton told this story about a time he was home alone watching a scary movie. I was watching Jack and Jill and I got so scared because it was so bad. Aaron Osborne apparently prefers me as just a voice. It's weird when she isn't disembodied. Super McMurph is referencing a comment Rebecca made last week. Watch Mojo Likes Pulp Fiction. Understate of the year. Yoav Yov Cohen wants to start a My Holiday is Better Than Yours fight, apparently. Purim is cooler than Halloween. Is it? I have no idea. Tell us about it, won't you? And finally, Andrew Boone has a costume idea for Rebecca and I. You should both share a horse costume. Only if I can be the butt. Anyway, guys, thanks as always for the comments and questions. If you like more FAQs, be sure to retroactively tune in to the show that was already aired this week, WMFAQ with Rebecca and our CEO, Ash. That is fact. And if you want your questions answered, leave them here in the comments. Catch us on Twitter or Facebook, or email us at watch at watchmojo.com. Don't forget the hashtag WMFAQ. And if you want a new t-shirt, old t-shirt, any kind of t-shirt, head over to watchmojo.com slash store. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and tune in again next time for another edition of What's Your Mojo? All work and no play make Jack a dull boy. <laughs>